The Tiger Men, the Qing Dynasty's furry fighters. Perhaps one of the least known but most intriguing units in the Qing Dynasty would be the Tiger Men. Dressed in tiger onesies and armed with a massive painted shield, they look like some half-hearted attempt at a community college sports mascot. Regardless, they've certainly captivated the imagination of the West, creating a both romantic and exotic image of China. Today, we shall take a quick look at the origins and history of this peculiar unit. Tiger symbolism in the ancient Chinese military dates back at least to the Sui Dynasty, where art depicted soldiers with tiger hoods to denote rank. Tiger skins were used to scare horses during the Warring States period. General Chen Chenggong, better known in the West as Ko Singa, used elite troops with tiger helmets against the Dutch during the Ming Dynasty. But these proto-tiger men are quite different from our beloved pajama-wearing sword-toting fellows. The real tiger men began in the Qing Dynasty. In the 24th year of the Kangxi Emperor's reign, or in 1684, tensions between Qing China and Tsarist Russia were boiling over a dispute over the territory of Yaksa, near modern-day Albazino. Kangxi realized the Russians had superior guns, so he summoned General Ling Xingzhu to find a solution. Ling Xingzhu suggested using reinforced rattan shields to block bullets, and a one-handed sword for offense. These shields could block arrows and blades well. They were also lightweight, which meant the user could maneuver and dodge bullets easily. Now this was nothing new. Sword and shield men had been used in China for several hundred years. But Ling Xingzhu equipped this unit with, you guessed it, the iconic tiger onesies. Now this may sound ridiculous to modern audiences, but in the heat of battle, having what appears to be a tiger coming at you would probably not soothe your nerves. The tiger pajamas would also have kept them warm in the winter. Kangxi was delighted and formed a 500 unit of these sword and shield warriors, aptly named the Huyi Teng Pai Bing, which translates to Tiger Cloth Rattan Shield Soldiers. This was the true beginning of the Tiger Men. Just a few months after, in 1685, the Russians attacked and took Yaksa. Qing forces mobilized quickly and besieged Yaksa. Now was the time for the Huyi Teng Pai Bing to prove themselves, and they most certainly did. The Tiger Men attacked the Russian attempt to relieve Yaksa. Their matchlocks were useless against the acrobatics of the Tiger Men, and the Russians were so rattled by the Tiger costumes that 15 of them surrendered almost immediately. The Tigers of War completely crushed the Russian sortie, killing 30 without losing a single man. This was the first success of the now esteemed Tiger Men. They easily retook the city of Yaksa, taking 700 prisoners and winning a decisive victory. Just one year later, the Russians attacked Yaksa again. And yet again, the Tiger Men pounced their way to victory. The emperor was pleased, and the Huyi Teng Pai Bing were made a distinguished special force in the Qing. Time passed quickly as the Huyi Teng Pai Bing faced victory after victory. Unfortunately, as the West's technology grew and flourished, China's did not. Chinese society stagnated, corrupted, and rotted from within, and this was soon reflected in the state of the army. The Tiger Men were believed to be protected by the gods and thus invincible, so there was no need to modernize. But when the British blasted open China's gates with shot and shell, the Qing expected another Yaksa. This unfortunately did not happen. Conventional forces were completely destroyed. The elite Tiger Men were deployed as a last result. Their commander, Shang Fu Yijing, consulted a prophecy which told him that if you do not meet men with the heads of tigers, your safety is uncertain. Of course, a 700-man strong unit of Tiger Men came to greet him. To maximize his blessings, he chose to attack the British at Dinghai on March 10th, 1842 at 4am. This was the month of the tiger, day of the tiger, year of the tiger, and the hour of the tiger. Yi Jing also made a clever pun. The word for foreigner in Chinese is yang, which also sounds like the word lamb, which is also yang. Yi Jing completely logically and reasonably concluded that since tigers ate lambs, everything was going to go perfect. Spoiler, it did not. The Tiger Men proved to be a bit of a paper tiger. The British muskets were greatly forward from the matchlocks of the Russians at Yaksa. The shields could block matchlock bullets, but not this new musketry, much less cannon fire, which the British had no shortage of. The Tiger Men weren't even able to get close to the British after being saturated with musket volleys and artillery fire. 600 Tigers were killed at the cost of one British. The Qing eventually capitulated to the British after several more fell. The invincible status of the Huyi Teng Pai Bing was broken, and although they did serve in later conflicts like the Taiping Rebellion, Duncan Revolt, Franco-Chinese War, Jiawu War, Boxer Rebellion, 
they never again achieved the same success and slowly faded away from prominence and existence. The uniform of the Tiger Man, as you might have guessed, was mainly a tiger costume made out of thick cloth. The tiger hood was sometimes held up by bamboo, offered some protection against bladed weapons, but generally mobility was the priority of this uniform. Some units wore only the tiger hood or vest, and generally there was no standardization in the striping of the uniforms. Stripes could be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, depending on the unit. Some even had tadpole patterns, as described by Western observers, so that they resembled their American cousin, the Jaguar Warrior. The rattan shields were layered with cotton to better defend against bullets and blows. The grotesque face was painted on to add to the psychological warfare effect, usually in the colors red, green, black, and white, though blue was sometimes used. On the shield was usually the character Wang, or King. This character is often associated with tigers in China, as the stripes on a tiger's head resemble it. They would flip, roll, block, and pounce their way to the enemy, which made them both incredibly agile, as well as hard to hit, and were pretty much exclusively sword and shield men. They would also be used as psychological warfare, and many reports describe their wild shouts, war chants, and gestures imitating those of a tiger. Later on, they were stated to have fitted gun barrels in their shields and scattered firecrackers all around the battlefield to scare the enemy. Supposedly, the tiger pattern on their uniforms would scare away horses who were instinctively fearful of the tiger pattern. However, you could probably guess how this worked against the West. Do note that the Hu Sheng Ying, or Tiger Spirit Battalion, during the Boxer Rebellion has no relation to these tiger men. The Hu Sheng Ying was a unit of fully modernized Manchu troops, and unfortunately did not wear tiger onesies. Another subject of interest would be the Osprey publishing book about the Boxer Rebellion. In its illustration, it presents a even weirder uniform for the tiger men. This version apparently is just some random guy dressed in a tiger striped vest with a very ugly shield. The book labels this chap as a quote unquote Manchu Tenai. Although I do not claim to be an expert in military history or history at all in that matter, I take issue with this description. First of all, in the same illustration, there's a picture of another boxer. On his chest is supposedly the character Yong, which means courage, but somehow they butchered it and turned it into this thing. As such, I think we can safely establish that this book may not be too knowledgeable of the Chinese language. Second, Tenai does not really translate to anything in Manchuria. I think the more likely scenario here is that the writers misinterpreted Tong Pai, which means Rattan Shield, as Tenai after reading it from some first-hand accounts. Tong Pai is simply the name of the Rattan Shields, which does not necessarily equate Tong Pai soldiers with Tiger Men. Due to this reason, I would not personally trust the Osprey book. However, if you take issue with my taking issue, then please let me know in the comments. As heroic and tragic as this story was, there is a lesson. If you lag behind technologically, you will be beaten. Such a law has remained unchanged for thousands of years. As glorious as the Tiger Men were against the primitive firearms of the Russians at Yaksa, they were completely curb stomped by the experienced and technologically superior British. Even if you are as powerful as a tiger, you will be humiliated and beaten if you fall behind.